this micro brand diver is better than Seiko. Let me tell you why. When I first opened the fantastic dual lock waterproof case of the Whitby Watch Company's Admare Diver, I was struck by two first impressions. One, the high level of finish overall, and two, the sharp angles reminiscent of the Seiko Samurai. Now, I'm not saying that the Admare is a homage to the Seiko Samurai or anything like that, but there are a lot of similarities. With the sharply angled lugs and the rugged good looks, it was hard not to make the comparison. The true inspiration behind this 200 meter diver is the rugged shorelines of the vast nation from which this micro brand springs, Canada. Inspired by nature that defies logic, the surfaces of the Admari dive watch clashes curves against sharp angles, much like the sea breaks on the shorelines of Canada's long coastlines. Named after the national motto that features on the arms of Canada, this watch combines inspiration from sea, to sea, to sea, Atlantic, Pacific, Arctic. And good to their word, the Admari is a study in the juxtaposition of curves and sharp angles. It comes in three colorways inspired by each national shoreline. There's the East Coast inspired Atlantic and light blue on blue, the West Coast inspired Pacific in dark, dark navy, and the North Shore inspired Arctic and Arctic winter in white. On the case back, you will find the Canadian national motto from sea to sea, and all three coasts represented in one custom 3D image. The polar bear to the north, the puffin to the east, and the orca to the west. Now, before I tell you why this is better than Seiko, let's take a deeper look at the watch beginning with the specifications and dimensions. It's 44 millimeters, excluding crown guards, and it's 46.5 millimeters to the six millimeter crown. It's got 22 millimeter lugs. It's 50.8 millimeters lug to lug and 14 millimeters thick. It weighs in at a fairly hefty 205 grams on the full bracelet. The movement is a Swiss automatic Salita SW200. The bezel is 120 click unidirectional rotating anti-scratch ceramic bezel, and it's got C3 Swiss Super Luminova on it. The crystal is a 2.5 millimeter scratch resistant sapphire crystal with AR coating on the inside. It's got a screw down crown, of course, with the embossed Whitby Watchco brand. The case back and the case are 316L stainless steel. The loom overall is C3 Super Luminova on the hands and the bezel markers and the indices. The water resistance is 200 meters, but they've actually tested it all the way down to 300. The bracelet is a brushed 316L stainless steel with a double safety folding clasp and of course the Whitby Watchco brand. And it's all designed and assembled in Canada. Taking a closer look at the dial, I have two versions before me today. Looking at the Arctic winter, we have a crisp white dial with an angled rehote bearing minute markers in orange and numerals at every five in black. Sharply angled hour markers have C3 filled loom centers with a highly reflective polished finish around the edges. A well-sized date window framed by a polished border breaks through the outer white ring to the wave patterned inner ring, which contains the Whitby logo above the pinion and 200 meters below. Although it should be noted that these are actually water tested to 300 meters out of an abundance of caution. Moving inward, the hour and minute hands are also loom filled and polished and are partially skeletonized. They are unique and they are really, really cool. The orange seconds hand tipped in black is also an original design and really pops against the white backdrop as it smoothly makes its way around the dial every 60 seconds thanks to the four hertz Swiss movement. The loom on this Canadian diver is very good. Definitely better than most of my collection, but it is not Seiko Monster good. Then again, what is? The bezel which overhangs the case ever so slightly is a matte black anti-scratch affair with loom filled markers. The standard Arctic version is only loomed at the 12 o'clock position. The bezel is nice and clicky and lines up better than any Seiko I've ever owned. I particularly appreciate how they've added six small cuts at regular intervals on the side of the bezel, providing a solid grip. The case on the Admari is all business, containing various angles, ledges, and beefy crown guards in a brushed finish. The brushed finishing is done at a very high level befitting the price point. It's got drilled lugs to make that strap change nice and easy for you. And there's a nice downturn to the case, which makes wearing it very, very comfortable. The bracelet once again transitions from steep angles to softer curves. It begins with a beefy positive end link that rises up to meet the bezel and it tapers from 22 millimeters down to 20. The bracelet appears to be a single link affair shaped to look like three links. When the brushing is so well done, it reads almost like a satin finish. The bracelet culminates in a smaller clasp with pushers and a fold over safety lock and only 
three micro adjusts. Although a heavier watch, it feels balanced and it hugs the wrist well for a 14 millimeter thick dive watch. And I don't notice the longer lug to lug or the positive end length so much because of the way it curves down. That being said, unless you prefer larger divers, this one may not be for you. On a related note, for those of you with bigger wrists, I never sized this watch. I'm using every link that came with it. And so if your wrist is bigger than eight and a half inches, you might want to request extra links. Taking a quick look at the Pacific colorway, we do notice a few differences other than just the chosen colors. One, the bezel is loomed only at 12. Two, the red seconds hand has a crescent counterbalance and no loom pip. And three, the wave pattern is different on this version. I think this really demonstrates the amount of thought that went into this line. Now it's hard to say which is my favorite color. Most of the time I think it's the Arctic winter, but then the light hits the indices of the Pacific just right and it looks so much richer than it actually costs. And of course, this brings us to price. The Admari is listed at 971 Canadian dollars or 689 euros or 737 USD. For a lot of people who watched my unboxing, the general comment was, nice watch, too bad it's so expensive. And I can completely understand the sentiment. The price of gas, food, and energy costs on the rise paired with rising inflation rates Spare change for our hobbies grows less and less by the day. And I think a lot of people may be looking at this and saying, why spend 745 USD for this Canadian micro brand when I can buy a Seiko Samurai for 350 bucks on sale at Macy's just about every other week. And as the former owner of a Samurai, I can appreciate this position pretty well. But when looking at this watch objectively, I'm reminded that this is better than Seiko, at least the Samurai. It has sapphire crystal with air coating for one. Yes, I know you can get an updated version of the Samurai now, but it costs quite a bit more. And the Admari is not perfect. It runs a little bit large, especially with the positive end links and the clasp with just three micro adjusts is just so-so. The loom is very good, but not quite Seiko good. But on the positive side, it has better finishing all around than the mid-level Seiko. Seriously, the case finishing, the polished applied markers, and the hands are just so, so good. The bracelet is better than what Seiko generally provides, and it has a Swiss movement that is far more accurate and contains a smoother sweep than the Seiko. Add to this a unique Canadian design and Canadian assembly, and I think you have something here that is far better than your average mid-level Seiko. Plus, if you subscribe, you can save 10%, bringing this down to 663 USD or 873 Canadian. I think a truer comparison would come against something like a Tissot or a Hamilton or even a higher end Seiko that costs quite a bit more than this does. And in a day and age where the new quartz below the Lunar Pilot has an MSRP of nearly 1200 Canadian, and even the Mecha Quartz Seiko Speed Timer is pushing upwards of $900, I can't fault Whitby Watchco for charging what they do for a well-designed and finished watch with a Swiss automatic movement. Of course, I could be completely wrong. So why don't you tell me down in the comments what you think of this Whitby Watchco Admari Diver? Are you willing to spend this kind of money on a micro brand with a Swiss movement? Or if not, what would you spend your money on? Thanks for watching and thanks to Whitby Watchco. Have a great day. We'll see how we made out.